Hey everybody, Ryan here at eTrailer. Today on our 2019 Mazda CX-5, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install the eTrailer.com Class 3 2-inch trailer hitch receiver. Out of the other hitches available, in my opinion, this one is my favorite. Really for a couple of different reasons. The main one being its carbide matte black finish. It really matches the bottom of our bumper nicely. It almost has that same texture even. And when you're looking at it from the back, it almost just looks like it belongs there and it's not out of place. And another reason is that for the most part, the hitch is going to be completely hidden. Really the only thing you're going to be able to see is what I'm touching here. That's what we call the receiver tube opening. And many of our CX-5 customers plan on using their hitch for accessories like bike racks in particular. And this is going to work great with those accessories because of the clearance it gives us. So the edge of our receiver tube is going to be just behind the edge of our bumper. So that's going to work perfect and give us more than enough room for those folding accessories. Being a class three hitch, it's going to have a two inch by two inch receiver tube opening and a reinforced collar for extra strength. It's going to have the standard 5.8 size pinhole. Now keep in mind, a pen and clip does not come included. But if you need one, you can find it here at eTrailer. Safety chain openings are going to be really clean and have a loop style design. And they'll give us enough room to use just about any size hook that we might have. The hitch is going to have some pretty impressive weight capacities. The maximum gross tongue weight rating is going to be 600 pounds. That's going to be the amount of weight pushing down on the hitch. That's a pretty high number and you should be able to use just about any size cargo carrier or bike rack that you would want to. As far as the maximum gross trailer weight rating goes, it's going to be 4,000 pounds. So that's going to be the amount of weight that's pulling on the hitch. So that's the weight of your trailer plus anything that you might have on it. Now I do like to point out it's never a bad idea to check with your Mazda's owner's manual to make sure your CX-5 can pull much weight. And if you do plan on doing a little bit of towing, I would recommend picking up some trailer wiring. That way the lights on your trailer will match the lights on the back of your Mazda and you'll be safe and legal. Now I'm going to give you a couple of measurements and you're going to use these to help figure out which hitch mounted accessories to get. From the ground to the top inside edge of the receiver tube opening, it's going to be about 13 and a half inches. So chances are pretty good you're going to need to get a ball mount with a rise. From the center of the hitch pin hole to the edge of our rear bumper, that's going to be about four inches. And you're going to use that measurement to help figure out that if any folding accessories you might have can be stored in the upright position without contacting the bumper. And if you're looking for a bike rack that'll blend really well with the hitch, I'd recommend the Thule Hitching Post Pro. But other than that, a really versatile hitch that's going to look good and it's made right here in the USA. Now as far as the installation goes, it is a little bit time consuming, but it's really not confusing. Everything's pretty straightforward in what you need to do. Shouldn't have any issues getting it done at home. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and put it on together now. To begin our installation, we're gonna be working underneath the back of our Mazda. We're first gonna start by removing this little center section here. It's kind of just like a little plastic support piece. There's gonna be a plastic fastener on each side of it. So you can take a trim panel tool or a flathead screwdriver you can pry underneath the head of it and pull that whole fastener out. And do the same thing for the other side. So once we have both of our rivets removed, if you come to this little opening here, you can take your flathead. There's kind of a little tab you can kind of push up on it. Kind of give you a better look at it there. Do that on this side too. Let me just take this and set it off to the side. With that little section out of the way, it exposed two more plastic fasteners. So we'll go ahead and pull those out too. Let's work the same way. Just pop the head of it down and release the fastener. At this point, we're going to need to lower our exhaust to give us some more room to work. But before we do that, what I'm going to do is take a strap. Just kind of run it from side to side. That way it has a little support and we can control how much it hangs down. On each side of our muffler, 
we're gonna have two rubber isolator hangers just like these. And so we're gonna need to remove these, that way our exhaust can get lowered down. So what you wanna do is spray them down with some lubricant or some soapy water. Then you can just take a pry bar and pry off one side of that rubber hanger. It really doesn't matter which side you take off. Kind of whichever one's the most compliant and easiest to remove. And fold that down out of the way. Same thing there. I'm just gonna repeat that same process for the other side of our muffler. Now that we have the exhaust free, what we can do is loosen up our strap a little bit, lower it down, that'll give us the room to work that we need. Now something I wanna point out, now that our exhaust is lowered, what you wanna do if you removed this portion of the hanger to get it lowered, you can pull that rubber isolator off. And we wanna make sure that all four of them are over the top hangers here. So you want them all to be in this position. That way when we put our hitch up into place, we're not gonna have any interference or anything like that. Now if we come to our frame rail, we're gonna have a wire harness that's attached to it with a push pin fastener. So you're gonna wanna grab a trim tool or a flathead screwdriver. Just gonna pry that out. Kinda pull it out of the way a little bit. And from this point on, Anything we do to one side, we're also going to do to the other side because they're going to be set up the exact same way. Now we can find our attachment points. If we look closer to the front of our CX-5, it might be a little tricky to see because they blend in pretty good, but we're going to have some stickers and the sticker is going to be covering one of the holes. So we can just peel that back, take it off, and that'll expose one of our attachment points. And then if we move towards the back of our CX-5. Now if we move towards the back of our Mazda, we should have another attachment point right here. Now ours does have some undercoating on it, so it's a little tricky to see. And if that's your case, what you can do, it's this larger hole here. If you reach up in there, you can kind of feel that opening and push it. All I'll do is just kind of make a little cut in it. And then you're able to see that attachment point. Now what I'm gonna do as well, since our hitch is going to sit flat against the side of the frame rail, what I'm gonna do is just take a scraper and kind of scrape off some of this undercoating. That way we know the hitch will lay nice and flat. Now we can prepare our hardware so we can put our hitch up. So this hole here towards the very back of our Mazda, in our case, it's just an open hole. So we're gonna use a fish wire to pull our hardware inside. Each car may be a little bit different. And what I mean by that is yours may have a threaded nut right here. And so if that's the case, you would simply just use the hardware that's included and listed in your instructions. But with the opening here, what we're gonna do is take a pull wire, take the coil in, push it through that hole and out of this larger hole in the bottom of our frame. I'm gonna take a spacer block, put it over the pull wire and a carriage bolt. Thread that carriage bolt onto the pull wire and then we can kind of feed that hardware up into the frame rail. We'll pull it out to make sure it's all lined up. But what we're gonna do is just push it back just inside of the frame. That way we can put our hitch up and we don't have to worry about that bolt stopping us. We'll be able to put it up and then pull it completely through. This attachment point is going to be a weld nut. So what I like to do is take a two brush and some lubricant, kind of just run it through to make sure the threads are nice and clean. And the hardware that we're gonna be using for this attachment point will be our bolt 
in a conical tooth washer. You want to make sure that the teeth on the washer are going to face towards the hitch. But what I like to do after I clean out the threads, is just kind of start it by hand, make sure it goes in nice and easy. That way we don't have to fight it when the hitch is being held in place. And I'll let you know it threads in real easy. You can pull it back out. Just keep it close by for when we put the hitch up. So I went ahead and took the flat washers that's included in our kit. And what you're going to want to do is tape them to line up with the holes here on the side plates on our hitch. You want to put them on the inside. So whenever we put our hitch up, these washers are going to sit against our frame rail. And those are going to take up the space that we need. So you do that for all four holes in the hitch. And I like to use electrical tape just because it's a little tougher and really helps keep them in position better. Now all we can do is take our hitch and put it into position. I'm going to make sure that you go over that wiring. And what I'm going to do is just get this attachment point here started. That way the hitch will support itself. Then I'll kind of be able to swing the hitch up into position. So now that we have that done on both sides and the hitch is just kind of hanging, supporting itself, what we want to do is kind of pull back on our bumper and pull the hitch up or push it up rather simultaneously because it's going to sit kind of behind our bumper. Once it's cleared, what we'll do is keep upward pressure on it. And what you're going to want to do is take the pull wire and push it through the hitch from the inside out like that. We'll do that on the other side too. And once we have both the pull wires through, we can then push it all the way up and pull the bolt through. Once you get that bolt pulled through, the way the hitch will kind of rest on it and keep it supported. Then we can go ahead and remove our pull wire. And for this bolt, we're gonna take a flange nut and get this started hand tight as well. With all of our hardware in place and hand tight, you can then grab a socket and snug it all down. Now we can grab a torque wrench and tighten everything down to the amount specified in the instructions. So I went ahead and took the included cable ties and used them to go around our hitch side plate to resecure our wiring. Now we can go ahead and lift our exhaust back up and resecure it. Do you find it easier to spray our hangers down again with soap and water when we're putting it back up? Just makes everything slide together easily. Since the exhaust is supporting itself, you can go ahead and remove our strap. And once we have this out of the way, we can move to the edge of our bumper and reinstall our push pin fasteners. Now I want to point out that little piece of plastic that we removed that went right here, that will not be getting reinstalled. So that's something you don't need to worry about. And that'll finish up our look at and our installation of the eTrailer.com Class 3 2-inch trailer hitch receiver on our 2019 Mazda CX-5.